by the truth shall set you free. free. Set you free. free. Set you free. Glory, hallelujah, you'll be free. Everybody's got love. Warming up their heart, they've got love. Warming up their heart. So don't hold back. Reach out a hand. Share it with the neighbor. Help them understand. The truth shall set you free. Set you free. Set you free. Glory, hallelujah, you'll be free. Everybody's got change. Jangling in their heart, they got change. Jangling in their heart. So don't hold back. Throw your two cents in. Share it with the neighbor, and you're both gonna win. The truth shall set you free. Set you free. Set you free. Glory, hallelujah, you'll be free. Sing that. Glory, hallelujah, you'll be free. Glory, hallelujah, you'll be free. Glory, hallelujah, you'll be free. Without inflaming herself, she is kindled. Without explaining herself, is explained. Without taking credit, is accredited. Laying no claim, is acclaimed. And because she does not compete, finds peaceful competence. How true is the old saying, yield and you need not break. How completely it comes home. Thank you for the wonderful music that started us. I would invite you to pick up this little covenant that we crafted at our very first meeting and let us unite our voices. As the Walker Faith Community, we fearlessly promise to include all opinions and we affirm active listening. It is okay to disagree but not interrupt. We encourage speaking for yourself, awareness of others, and the vulnerability that entails. With active listening, we will strive for clarity, fun, love, and kindness. The Walker Faith community is open to change as we work together toward the next chapter in our shared journey. Thank you. We we're doing that every time we gather as a reminder of, of how we started and, and the commitments that we made to each other. Uh, we're joined online by people. How many, how many online folks do we uh, happen to have at this, this time, Henry? Uh, we've got six people online. Six people online. Well, we want to be sure to include them. And if they have questions or want to participate, I know that we'll, that will be communicated to us. We thank you for helping make all this happen. Can now, we know who they are? do we know who they are? Can we know who they are? They, yeah, they know who we are, but we don't yeah. know who they are. We've got uh, Bonnie Beckel, Cheryl's joined, Del, Joe Hesla, and Sally Coon. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Thank you. So, what we're going to do next? I'm sorry, you had a question. 
Dell is probably really Jan Hornis. All right. <laughs> oh, somebody who isn't somebody is somebody else. Okay, uh, that, that does happen <laughs> on Zoom. So what we're going to take a look at next, you, you have, we put an agenda out so you can see sort of what we're going to be moving through. Uh, the session two recap, this was sent out, but I'm still going to go over it because, uh, and there, there's usually about one or two at each table, uh, so you can share, we, we invite people to share if you need your own copy there. There's nobody here at this table in front, so there'll be plenty of stuff. So I'm, I'm going to read read through this, uh, the report on session two. Approximately 30 people gathered around the tables in person and there were seven on Zoom. After music by Howard Prance and a poem shared by David, the evening began with our unison reading of the covenant crafted during the first session. And we just did that, so we're, we're doing the same thing. We then examined the four options for the Walker uh, Church faith community. One was to continue as a United Methodist Church Number two was to become a fellowship. Number three was to discontinue, that means to close. And number four was disaffiliate. Now, we sat in small groups, just like we are tonight, around tables, and we talked uh, together and came up with some key points. And these were the key points that we came up with during session two. We wanted to use the resources the church has, various funds. We want to pay down debt. We, uh, one person was very clear that, that she wanted more time for the faithful uh, path process. And I just want to say a quick word about that. This whole thing began last December and stopped and started, stopped and started, and uh, it never sort of got launched. And so uh, the one board decided that they would, uh, they would hire me to help move the process through. We chose dates and times that most people could, could gather and meet, and we decided on the process, and it, it's, we're sticking to it pretty closely. There's a little moderation, a little thing or two that changed, but nothing significant at all. So we're working through the process. This is the third meeting, okay? We're having six meetings. And at the end, we will not have a final determination. What we will have will be lots of good information that will be shared, and then there will be a uh, church conference. Is that on the 11th? Uh, do I remember? That was, yeah, September 11th. Sep to September 11th would be the church conference. And uh, that's when there will, will, will be some decision points. The other thing I just want to say so you understand, it isn't going to be like, everything's going to change all at once. It's going to take a year, year and a half, two years to go through the whole, all of the changes that will probably, but a, a roadmap will be laid out. That's, that's the plan. Um, yes, you can ask questions anytime, that's fine, yes. Uh, for the September 11th meeting, everyone who, everyone has to be a member of the United Methodist Church in order uh, to- Of Walker United, United Methodist Church. Walker, Walker United Methodist Church. Yes, and we're gonna provide an opportunity for people who uh, have not formalized their relationship to do so. Okay. We don't, we're, we're not trying to cut people out, we're not trying to do any of that, and we had a, a discussion this afternoon among uh, some of the, the, the principles that we're gonna be putting that together, so you'll, you'll be hearing yeah. more about I, that. I, I, I think that's important for people to know that- Yes, that it, is, it is important. Yeah. However, people will not join just to vote. People will join because they make a commitment to the Walker faith community, to support the Walker community with their prayers, their presence, their, uh, their gifts, their service, all those things. That's what it means to be a member. M membership isn't about voting, although that's one of the privileges. Membership's about supporting the community. No, but I just think there are quite a few people at Walker Church who support, you know, they just haven't made the formal step. Yeah, no, and, know, and, so and, and all those I'm people- Absolutely. One of the things that I want, want to be really clear with people is that this, this whole process is transparent, it's straightforward, there is no magic things being done in the background, it's absolutely the way it is. And, and ask quite, well, no, it needs to be that way. 
you know, you have to build a, a sense of trust. We're going to have opportunity for more questions later. Let me, let me keep moving through this, please. And, and we'll have plenty of good time for chat because we're, we're going to be here for a while yet. Um, we need strong lay leadership. The lay leadership in this congregation needs, needs to step up and do important things. And there's, a, there's a, a, a small cadre who's working very hard and they will need others uh, in the future to be part of all that. Uh, we need more diversity in our congregation. Uh, I'm just going by what you said. This is, uh, this is not, I'm not, not making any of this up. We need to be invitational. We need to invite people to be part of this. Um, and then as we voted by table, we had seven tables. We got one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, uh, five tonight. When we voted, we had three tables that wanted to become a fellowship and four that wanted to stay a United Methodist Church. So we shared the survey results from the, from the first session and those are available. And uh, if somebody requests them, they can, it can be emailed to them. Uh, Henry, is that correct? Okay. Um, the congregation strengths, the work areas, meeting your spiritual needs, and what are your dreams. We then distributed ballots for rank choice voting. Voting took place in person and online and was limited to those who were part of the session. Absentee voted, voting is not allowed. 50% of the votes plus one is the winning margin. A total of 31 votes were cast. 17 to remain a United Methodist Church, 13 to become a fellowship, and one to disaffiliate. The vote was to remain a United Methodist Church with strong second choice to become a fellowship. That's, those were the things that happened at the, our last meeting. Yes? Um, I, I think that uh, one of these little figures was an error. Um, I don't, it, don't, it probably doesn't have much significance, but um, you kind of tallied up like the table vote, so to speak. Oh, that, yeah, that was just an informal, a, informal thing on here. So, Um, so if you want to verify that with my other members, I know who they are, but you know, it's probably not significant in any way, but this was, we really did not vote at all for like, a, a, you know, one of the numbers I, at all, so just FYI. Yep, I just put marks on here, and the good thing is we're going to have somebody who, whose handwriting can be read, <laughs> and so Mary, Mary is the one who's going to, going to write stuff up on the board today, so thank you, and, and, and uh, your concern is registered. Um, so, that was the report on the second session. Now, uh, we've got three options for leadership. And I wanted to go over this, and then you're going to sit in your table groups, and you're going to have a discussion about this. And, and I would invite that one person at each table sort of be the note taker, so that you can share when we do our, our uh, when we stop our breakout session, you can share what some of the valid points that were raised. Now, there are three options for leadership. One is to employ credentialed clergy. Um, the appointment can be in increments of a quarter time, half time, three quarters time, or full time. That's what the, that's what the discipline says. They could be an active or retired ordained United Methodist clergy or a licensed local pastor appointed for the purpose of ongoing oversight of word, order, and sacrament for the faith community. If Walker Church remains United Methodist, the conference would identify and place a pastoral candidate in close consultation with Walker leadership. It's called an appointment generally. Two, employ an intentional interim clergy. This is the piece that changed a little bit, we had, we had uh, initially put down a licensed local pastor, and there aren't any in, the, in our area that would be appropriate for Walker. <laughs> so we decided the idea of, and we being, uh, it was Henry and the district superintendent and Tyler and I thought it was a better idea to, to give the idea of the potential leadership of an interim person. That means somebody who's here for a period of time, whether it's a year or two years or 18 months or whatever it is they decide. Uh, uh, that person would also be in increments. They could be active or retired United Methodist clergy or other denomination. They'd be appointed for a defined period of time to lead the congregation towards sp uh, stated outcomes. They would be sort of a, 
a, a contract or whatever would be put together saying this is what is expected and this is what we want to have happen over whatever period of time you decide would be appropriate. The third choice is lay, employee lay leadership. And Walker Church could hire a secular role such as an executive director or a counselor. Uh, any lay leadership would not ha have sacramental authority to perform baptisms, administer Holy Communion, officiate at weddings as United Methodist uh, pastors. While lay leadership could ultimately be a direct hire from Walker Church, they are, if they are assigned a spiritual leader, they would still need to be vetted by the, by the cabinet and have the safe gatherings background check. We're very, very clear in our denomination about making sure that people uh, uh, go through that background check to make sure that uh, everybody is safe. And, and that's, that's important. And then if a chartered church or fellowship walker would remain administratively under the care of a superintendent. So credentialed clergy, intentional interim clergy, lay leadership. Now what I would ask you to do is meet in your little groups. It is now 25 minutes uh, after seven and I'd give you about 10 to 15 minutes depending on how loud and noisy you all are. Yes. Can we ask questions if you prefer? Yeah, can we ask questions about those three options? Oh, okay. uh, So if anybody has a question, you have to come to a microphone and this. Uh, this is the wireless one. Now, now just a second. I, let, let me just take it out. They're, they're making a valid, valid point. I'll be with you in a second. Your question was you wanted to ask questions right away. Was that it? I was just wondering, before we talk within our group, there are several questions in my mind that I would guess in other minds also. Perfect. Thank you. I'll be glad to respond the best I can. I'll get over to you next. Um, so, uh, credential clergy or interim clergy, those are specifically United Methodist clergy? Not necessarily, no. So, so they could be UCC or they course. could be? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, that's, that's what's confusing me. What? Oh, right, right, right. Um, third question under lay leadership, um, what kind of relationship then and oversight do we have to maintain with the United Methodist Church? Uh, as, as long, if you stay a, a fellowship or a United Methodist Church, you still have to be in, in relationship with the, the district su superintendent would have, uh, it would be uh, sort of providing oversight. It says it, I think, quite clearly. Where is, where is the piece here? It's, a, it's here. It's this one. If a charter church or fellowship, Walker would remain administratively under the care of a superintendent. That's not on here. It's this. It's on this one here. Now, uh, I'll, I'll go to you, and then uh, I'm still planning to come to you, and then I think there's a hand. Yep. <laughs> the second option, interim clergy, <clears throat> sounds to me like we're just putting off the decision for some amount of time so that we can decide, make another decision after that time or during that time. Is that right? Just kind of. Interim means putting off the decision. We're, as I said earlier, I believe it's going to take a period of time before all the decisions that are made are f fulfilled and taken care of. I don't think it's putting anything off. Um, I, th I think it's providing, you, you say, I'm, we're not going to have this person be here for, you know, all clergy, just so you know, in the United Methodist Church, they have one year at a time. You're hired for one year. And then the church says, yes, we want them back, or, or they say, no, we don't want them back. Or the pastor says, I don't want to go back, or I want to go back. And then it's extended another year if, if they're in agreement. It's one year at a time. You're never appointed for, you know, for 40 years. It just that's, that doesn't work. Now, I'm going to go to this next person who had their hand up very early, and I'll answer. Okay, you have one more question? Okay. So, therefore, what's the difference between first and second? One is an intentional interim. We're saying this person will only be around for a year or two or whatever you decide. And the first one, it, it's a regular appointment, and they will continue to, to be there as long as you choose. That's the difference between the two. Yeah, yeah. 
You're welcome. Thank you, because in that same vein, just to be clear, do you remember your last sentence before we all started talking? Because that was my question, if you could repeat the last sentence. I think it was the scenario where the Methodist chooses a pastor for us and the scenario when we can choose our own leader. No, that's not how it works. In the appointment system, uh, the bishop, cabinet, district superintendent, look at all of the potential candidates and they decide on one they think is best for the, for the position. That person then comes and meets with the staff parish relations committee. In Walker's case, it would probably be the one board. That's my guess. I, you know, I, 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 I'm, not gonna, I'm not the district superintendent. And that candidate would come and there would be uh, an interview and either the, the, the SPRC, the staff parish relations committee, or the one board would say thumbs up, or they'd say thumbs down. The, the candidate would say thumbs up or thumbs down. And that's, that's how the, that particular decision is made. I've been through that oodles of times, and it's always interesting, I gotta, I gotta admit. Now, that's the answer to the other part of the question. Uh, uh, okay, this will be my question, and I think it's a follow-up. Uh, so when, under what circumstances, can Walker choose its own because it, it sort of says that you're under one of the choices? If you decide you want lay leadership and not, not ordained clergy. Yeah. So I've got another one here, another one here. We'll, oh, that's good. I'm, I need to get my 10,000 steps in today. I have an, a, a slightly a different uh, understanding of credentialed and intentional clergy. Um, Credential clergy is just like an ordained official clergy person. Um, I'm a clergy person. David's a clergy person in the Methodist Church. Intentional interim clergy is looking for a person who can work in a period of transition. So if Walker decides we want a clergy leadership but we're going through a particular transition time, and in order to do that, we want someone who could specialize in helping us move through that transition of change. That's an intentional interim. It's it versus we want someone to help us work out this plan, you know, this year, but perhaps ongoing forever, or well, not forever, but for a bunch of time. And usually an intentional interim clergy person, well, Methodists aren't good about training or preparing clergy to do intentional interim ministry. Some have been trained or they employ some clergy from other denominations that have been trained. I've had training and I have been in effect my own intentional interim clergy because I've served in churches that were going through tight transitions during that period of time. It was unintentional in <laughs> clergy, but that's how I interpret that. Now, yes, you've got a question online. I'll bring the microphone over and we'll get it. All right, uh, Cheryl's asking, in relation to the lay leadership, um, the line vetted by the cabinet, just clarification on what is the cabinet. Thank you for that question. Uh, the cabinet is the bishop and the district superintendents. Uh, and they're the ones that, that oversee the uh, appointment process. They actually colleague together and they, uh, they different people can nominate different candidates and they'll talk about the candidates for the position and then they'll, when they, they reach a decision, and it isn't because the smoke comes out of the chimney, you know, <laughs> but, but, the, but they have a dis discernment process that they have and then that's when the candidate then is, comes and is presented to the, to the uh, congr to congregation, not to the congregation, they're presented to the Staff Parish Relations Committee, so. One more question and then I'm going to let you get into your groups because 
You've got good questions, and I bet you you'll come up with more when you're together. Here you go. Thank you. Okay, this is revisiting things from the past, I know. Um, but there have been problems getting an interim pastor in the past. And based on what Mary just said, there's a shortage of people who are sort of trained in this kind of thing. And you just mentioned a little while ago that the one option we had about a licensed person, there's nobody that would fill that role. So um, what are the, the chances that we will be able to find an appropriate person, either interim or long term? And then one little detail question, are we also supposed to talk about one fourth time, one half time, full time, or whatever, when we get into our groups? You can talk about anything you want, and, and uh, yes, uh, they will find somebody. I will let you get together now. You, <laughs> you're a good group, and it was nice to have the question from online. And get together. If you have, I'm going to come and sort of sit at each table, and if you, uh, just to observe. I'm, I'm not there to answer questions. Okay, group. Hey, Joe. Hey. Hey, everybody. Hey, y'all. Hi there. Wally's here with me, too. Yeah, hey, Wally. Good to Hi. see you, man. Hey, nice you Wally. Hi, everybody. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. I, I'm not feeling really well, but glad to be here. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I don't know. If I, I would, Henry, are you with us or not? Chuck. Hmm. Let's let's just go around and share our thoughts. Okay. You want to start, Joe? Are you comfortable starting? Um. Okay, I could start. Bonnie, turn your sound down, would you? Um. I'm in favor of whatever it costs the least. So. And uh, I think I think about lay leadership. I don't know because who is that? Actually, I would I wouldn't mind that paying someone from our church to do it. But I think we we don't have a lot of money. And I'm I mean I voted for fellowship, so I think that goes along with that. So I'll I'll just say that briefly that that's what I'm in favor of. You prefer somebody from our church? Is that what you're saying? I'm. I'm I just don't think we should spend a lot. And I'll just pass it on to my right Wally. You're muted, Sally. Yep. I'm just here to observe what's happening. Um, I'm torn. Um, I think um, I think I'm I'm kind of torn between uh, an interim and lay leadership. I'll just leave it at that. Are you feeling like you don't want to commit to? the first choice is that part of it um yeah i don't feel like um i mean I, I know the chances that we can get somebody trained for an intro might be slim but i would prefer to spend the next few months with somebody that has a clue of how to lead people that are going through transitions that's and that's a good point yeah um, you know, if I knew for sure that certain people in our congregation would pick up the lay leadership, I would probably be on that right away, but I don't know for sure. You know, we have no guarantee that people will want to do that. Yeah. Um, I sort of feel like in a way, I, I hope I'm not overstepping, but it, it feels to no. me that in a way that Mary has been doing that 
periodically and I think she is fantastic. Um, and I don't know whether she would consider. Um, and then there's something in the, what do you call it? The grist mill, the gossip mill that, <laughs> that um, you know, maybe David already knows that he's got this job and that he's been ready for this job since he came to visit and this job that he's doing right now and the next job. So I don't know if that's true or not, but um, I, I would like to have more than one choice if, if we are actually going to get some some kind of leadership. Cheryl, I'm, I'm typing in what people say so I can send it to Henry. Do I, oh. should I put that in about David? Please don't. I, d I didn't think so, but okay. Yeah, thank you for asking. Yep. I appreciate that. I just, I mean, I just need to uh, put that out there just because um, you know, like by not, by not the way he described what the process that happened, it's not exactly like that. Um, we were told one thing, the, the board was told one thing was going to happen. We were told we would have these other choices and then they never came to pass. And all of a sudden here's David. Yeah, well, I'll facilitate, you know, so I just feel a little bit compromised in a way that way. Uh, um, so yes, I guess I will just say I would I would appreciate employing lay, lay leadership or if we could find somebody like you said, Sally, somebody who's um, adept at transitional congregations in a, ha, that have been in upheaval for about a year. You know, I think lay leadership is our best option because we have more control. Um, even with a uh, interim, they're going to appoint that. Can we, Sally, can we hear from everybody first before? Oh, sorry, maybe, sure. um, so Wally and, and um, oh, Jan too. Wally, Bonnie, and Jan. And Casey? Wally opted not to, not okay. to comment. Jan, why don't you go ahead? Um, I feel like I have COVID, so I'm here. But my is all the box open. What's the best person we can get from the day we have? You know what we can do with it. I just, I don't understand. Jan, you're, bre you're breaking up, Jan. I'm sorry. Can you do something? Okay. I, I, don't, know what, I don't know what to do um, other than talk to her, maybe. Or just, no. Nope. I turn this or something I don't know I'm just um I just think we should keep all our options open I'm not really I'm very leery of a a, a lay solution um just because I don't know how well that will work and I don't know how what the expectations will be and how we will relate to the person as a that takes that position in terms of treating them as something different other than a member of the community like any other member. So that kind of, I have some concerns about that. That's all I'll say. Okay, I'll, I'll say that uh, I, I'm pretty strongly in favor of the fellowship option. Um, and the idea of having lay leadership to me goes along with that. And, and I agree with what Sally said about how that gives us more control um, over things, which to me in this time of transition, we, we need to basic, basically people who care about this, kind, this community, it's time to step up and figure things out together rather than having leadership from the church come in and figure it out on our behalf. So it is sort of an interim thing, um, but maybe we can have an interim um, person without a, a defined outcome in mind, you know? Okay, that's what I'm thinking.
Henry, you Henry? run away? All right, I'll try. Let me know if it's too much. There's a lot of people talking in the room. Um, I, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty split between the intentional interim and lay leadership. I agree. I think in the long term, I feel like, especially if we ended up doing a fellowship thing one day, I think lay leadership lends itself to that. And I think lay leadership lends itself to the type of faith community that Walker is. Like, I think that we really, we like to have a really close connection with the pastor here. Um, and sometimes that's difficult for certain pastors or it can be difficult. Um, my only hesitation with the intentional interim is kind of what someone raised the point of like, are we going to be able to find someone, which I'm sure the district would send us someone, but I don't know. I'm like, I, I just am concerned that process may take a long time. And then um, also knowing, I think that our Dan Johnson, that guy is, I think he's retiring this year. So we might end up having kind of like a new person who has to come in and learn a lot about Walker before they could even appoint someone. That's something that I was thinking about, but that's kind of where I'm at. I'm a little conflicted at the moment between those two. Casey, can you talk with us? Hello. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm late to the meeting. I'm sorry, it's five o'clock here, not seven. <laughs> Um, I, um, I just got the, the document up a minute ago, so I'm kind of still catching up a little bit, but what I'm feeling is we're making one more attempt to continue to be a, a Methodist church and we want to give it a good try. Um, our fallback position is the, the fellowship, which would be fine. Uh, the difference being whether we can keep our building or not. And the more I think about it, the more I think about um, someone else could be carrying out our mission through that building instead of us. So that doesn't seem quite so bad to me as it used to. But anyway, to get around to the leadership thing, I'm thinking uh, an intentional interim clergy, if they can give us one within a month, Stringing this out another six months, I think, would um, really tear at our guts. I think it would be really hard for us to do that. So if I would, I would go for the interim clergy if they could give us one within a month. Um, and I'd be really fine with lay leadership as well. But again, it would take us time to find the person or name, the, or we might have an interim lay leader so my, yeah, so my first choice would be interim clergy if they can do it right away and uh, lay leadership if we have to do it on our own. I like what you're saying, Casey. So I would like to know that we still have a potential for being a fellowship but is that a done deal because of last week's vote? Oh, no. Abs excuse me for butting in here, but absolutely. We could uh, change our minds today if we wanted to switch. In, uh, fact, in fact, David said that isn't even, doesn't even have any kind of decision-making power at all. It's just, it was like a straw vote. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep. So the vote will be probably in early September. I imagine that's when we'll have our charge conference. And that's where we, where all the members get to vote. And that would be the final vote. Did I represent uh, what people said? Did I miss something? Did, can you see what I typed in the chat? Oh, uh, I don't see it yet. Oh, I have to make a Google Doc, I think. Okay, let me do that. Thanks for doing that, Joe. Appreciate Good. It. When it's time for a talk back, Joe, do you want to? I could give you my phone number and you could call in to the room. If you, if that, okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I can do that. So I don't need to make a Google Doc. I guess I mean, that's why I do that. 
yeah only if you only if you really want to <laughs> but also it'd be great to see the dance i love that love Joe, I would actually love to see that as a Word doc or a Google doc. Right now. Yeah, tell them I'm going to do it now. <clears throat> I think it's going to work. Oh. I'll, I'll, bring, I'll bring the room, the microphones back up whenever they start back up, but everyone's still talking here. Now so See. If we were doing lay leadership, then How that you... would that be much different than what has been happening? Do you think? I imagine it would be it would be a little hopefully it'd be a little more intentional <laughs> than what we've got right now. And people would hopefully maybe get paid more more directly for the work that they're doing. Does yeah, it seem know. does it seem like Mary Buckley or maybe even Mary Parker could fill that? That's what I was saying. I would love it either of those people, especially I mean Mary Parker's been so spot on every time she's taken the reins. Um and I yeah, both of those women are aces as far as I'm concerned. And I feel like there's I could be wrong about this, but I think you can kind of split sort of like how we've been doing it, kind of split the responsibilities a little bit too. So it's less work. It's not like one person has to do everything that a, a pastor would normally do. I think that would be a great, uh, that might be a really good, at least stop gap, but perhaps long-term solution. What does anybody else say? I mean, I like it. I still think that we should try to do minimal. I mean, but but then not, you know, a minimal amount, but then not have them do a lot so that they're not getting oppressed, you know. Pay, pay them for their hours, but I don't know. So I think Mary Parker's been doing a great job. Um, She's not exactly a lay person, which I guess is a good thing. Um, I would be, I'm, I'm getting along well with David. I think that he could help us a lot. Um, I think his specialty is fundraising. And I think that would help us um, give us a little more, a few more options. But uh, I'll just say, this is, you know, this is in the vault, but I don't, I personally don't want David, but. Um, okay. But yeah, and I, I'm not hung up on that. I'm just, uh, I was imagining that that would be an option, but Mary Parker, in my mind, is um, doing a great job. Does everyone know what we're doing now? We're paying Mary Parker to do the services, and we're paying Tyler to be our connection to uh, the Methodists. That's kind of the way I view it. That probably may not be what they think of their job description. Who's well, Tyler, was something Casey? What? Sorry. You asked me a question? Go ahead, Bonnie. Yeah, Tyler, that... Tyler's the new city pastor. Oh, yeah, of course. I was just going to say that that's kind of what I was thinking in terms of the job of the pastors a lot more than Sunday mornings. And it's really different skills. And so, um, but there's a lot of administrative and the context with the um, larger Methodist church is important for financial issues and other issues. So maybe, I don't know if Tyler's, Tyler's got another job now. So is he still gonna stay on with us during this time? I don't time? think so. I think he, well, he's already said that he, uh, he started a new church up North and he's not gonna be able to stay with um, Walker. He'll be with New City and his new church. Okay. But that's just an example of someone mentioned split leadership. That's an example of what we've been doing. I know yeah. that's my problem that I've seen is that there's been so much changeover. Everybody has a piece of it. Nobody's really there for the long haul or the commitment um, or 
for a variety of reasons, not somebody's lack of commitment, but just for a variety of reasons, it hasn't worked that way. So. Um, I think if we do lay leadership, we should consider uh, splitting the job because it is a huge job. And, um, you know, uh, also the United Methodist Church may require that we have somebody that can be a point person that is, um, and maybe Mary Buckley could be that person, I don't know, but has a official relationship with the Methodist Church, but Mary could do the other stuff or, you know, however, I don't know what Mary wants to do, but it just seems to me like we need a job description and we need, you know, um, maybe more than one job description for, for the lay position if we do that. So as we, as we talk about this, are we mostly talking about an interim or possibly those people, people we're talking about becoming our lay permanent leadership or either one? Is that, is that kind of where this group is? That's how I'm down? feeling. I'm feeling, I'm feeling glad that it's ranked choice. <laughs> so I can <laughs> kind of pick both. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. You're feeling what, Henry? Oh, I was saying I'm feeling glad that it's a ranked choice ballot so I can kind of pick both because <laughs> otherwise I couldn't pick. <laughs> so let me see, can I help? I need help clarifying what I'm looking at here. If the credentialed clergy had, would have the potential of being uh, a two to five to 12 year commitment, in, intentional interim clergy would be uh, half a year or something. And lay leadership, does lay leadership fit under the um, choice that we made last time th that, would, that would, we would be a traditional Methodist church or is lay leadership the choice that we would take if we were a fellowship? Can I just address that first part? David just said that whether it was a credential clergy or intentional interim, after a year, you, you touch base and say whether we want to keep that person, right? Oh, right. Yeah. So not 12 years. What, no. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Year. That one okay. year. So, so somebody else addressed the rest. But that one year thing applies to both a credentialed person and a, uh, so. Well, that's life, right? Uh, if we had a problem with our pastor, we would have the opportunity to make a change. I think um, to answer your second question, my understanding is that uh, um, you can do lay leadership inside a chartered UMC, but it's a little, it's a little less common. Um, but I think that you can. So if we chose someone as a lay leader who was also, by the way, a minister, they would just have to get cleared? I think so, yeah. Yeah, they're saying vetted by the, he said bishop and superintendent or something like that. And then there's this like a, like a safety kind of class oh, yeah. or something they have to take. Thank you. So Jan, is Dell also a Walkerite? He's not a member. Uh -huh. He's part of the community, does stuff. He was here earlier, but he's yeah. he's not here. Yeah, I thought he was sort of on the on the verge or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to keep him away from me because he's tested negative and oh. I've tested positive. So oh. I've got so. <clears throat> I hope you feel better soon. Yeah, thanks. How are you, Janet? Jan what? Reyes. How are you? Well, I'm I'm okay. I mean, I I, I feel sick. 
but I've started the antiviral. Mary, come up here because she's going to be the the writer of of uh, beautiful good and beautiful words and thoughts <laughs> and legible. See, I I didn't get any really bad complaints on my writing, but you know what? I I, I didn't like it so. <laughs> So let, we're gonna we're gonna start with this table here, and uh, I'm gonna bring a microphone to you, and you can report. We'll call them table one. You just I wouldn't you know you don't have to write all their names down. I don't think. Okay, all four of us were pretty much in agreement that. Okay, now it's on. Um, we're all pretty much in agreement that it, with the intentional interim clergy, um, specifically because we're in a time of flux, and so that interim person would reflect that flux more. Though um, we also, the credential clergy was the second place. None of us would have wanted the lay leadership. We talked a little bit about um, one-fourth versus one-half time. We, we agreed that we pretty much couldn't afford anything more than that. And it would be nice to have half time, but again, could we afford it? And um, the, the issue of the debt came up again that, you know, paying off the debt is, seems to be important in terms of what we can afford. And then there was one concern raised that the congregation as a whole not fall into the danger of thinking that we could get a minister who's going to fix everything and that we really need to be aware that it's the congregation that needs to take the leadership with this. Wow, that was really good stuff. Really good, thank you. Uh, how about we get the online? We're gonna, we're gonna go, that'll be number two. All right. Here's Joe. All right, Joe, you're on. Okay. Um, our group. Whoa. Sorry about that. Here, I'm gonna try to turn off your echo for you. Is that, is that okay, everybody? Okay, good. Now let's go to this fine table here. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, we kind of vacillated between um, how, uh, kind of the two opposites, the credential, uh, the credential leader and the lay leader. Um, one of us thinking that um, that this congregation is creative enough to um, to craft their own thing, like we have been, um, um, and um, also just throwing out there, it's you know it has relied I think on 
a handful of individuals and I, I, I was the one who said, well, um, maybe with the blessing of those, that handful of people to go to, to be able to vote for the lay leader if, um, you know, are those people going to continue their you know, dedication? Um, would other people step up? Just questions. Um, and um, uh, the credential, another vote was um, kind of towards the credentialed, um, seeming safer. Um, one thing uh, seemingly possibly missing in this last six months to a year um, has been any member recruitment or um, much member recruitment. And I think maybe fundraising. And I'm, I'm wondering if uh, is is it safer to go to with a credentialed leader just for the purposes of, of recruitment and fundraising and maybe a handful of other very important things for the congregation? Thank you. You guys were doing the outside the room table. I'll just keep this. Can I keep this with me? I think we all want to say a word to my position was a pastor with full credentials that has an oversight all aspects of the church in consideration and i think only a pastor can do that uh, as individuals we we do finance we do membership but a pastor has the big picture in mind and coordinates and blends that that work and they're trained and experienced, hopefully, to do that. I support that. We want to. We're guys, so we're all just going to say something really quickly. Oh, you're all going to say something? I support what Jesse said with this caveat. Three pastors, okay, quarter pay if it's take 100%. And then one paid lay leader. The emphasis being on it's going to be a major undertaking for this person, and we all support this person, but maybe we can have three or four paid people. And the last just concept, very briefly, we are opening to the New Age and a New Age Walker Methodist mystique. Yeah, I just um, think it's hard. Uh, not knowing where we're going, you know, or having a consensus of where we want to be in a couple of years. You know, I like the idea of, uh, of the possibility of there being a building manager. And I also like the idea of um, possibly, right, and so, um, so, so for me, the interim um, makes sense because, and for that, I would hope that this person would help us congeal what our mission is and what, where we want to be in two years. I don't know if I'm speaking for my whole table. We talked about a lot of things. Um, first went from analyzing our resources, and then David said, go towards your dream and then figure out resources. And I made an impassioned speech about a lay minister, or an interim minister being trained to do that function of transition whereas a credential clear, clergy without clear expectations can't. Thank you. Um, well, I think we just had a, a lot of questions. Um, I, w I will share what Mary just said, that one thing that we, uh, Conrad mentioned was the concern for money and you know what what are we going to be able to pay for and that's going to influence and then David is here
Mistake. My mistake, I apologize. The first choice is credential clergy, intentional interim clergy, or lay leadership. You choose one. If you have a second choice, you don't have to, but it's, it gives you more power if you have a second choice. You can choose a second one, but it cannot be the same as the first choice. It has to be a different choice. And if you do a third choice, it has to be different from your first and second choice votes. So you can only vote for one in each of the three categories, and they cannot be the same. It doesn't, it, it will make the ballot not good. Yes? And if you, like, don't want a certain thing, you don't put it in your third choice. That's right. You only vote, you only vote. If, whoa, if there's a choice that you absolutely don't want, Leave it. Leave one of the choices blank. Do not vote for something for third choice if it's something that you just absolutely don't want. Leave it blank. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about the vote? Bring them up and lay them right here, please. Fold them in half and set them right down there. Is Mary Parker, would she be uh, somebody that could qualify for a number two? Does everybody have their ballots handed in? They're all handed in. No, they're not, they're not all handed in. There's still several more. No, no. You, 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 you got to click on the link. You, you have to make a first choice, and then a second choice. The Henry sent. Okay. Yeah, I just saw that. Thank you. I'll take that. Are there any other outstanding ballots? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. It's going to take me a minute. Okay, friends. Henry and I are going to tally the votes. You can stay or not stay. It's going to take us a few minutes to do that. Um, if you, I'm going to say a, a farewell blessing. You can, you can stay. Uh, we're going to go into the back room and do that. Henry, we can go into the, into the back room and, and uh, do the ballots. Okay. So, thank you. You have in typical Walker fashion, a variety of opinions and thoughts and ideas. You articulate them, you express them, you let other people know you did so in a very respectful way and a very helpful way. Um, we will let you know what the results are. They will be posted and they'll, they'll come out. If you want to stay around, uh, it will probably take us 10 minutes in the back to, to do all that. Uh, I'm going to say a a little blessing for us and plus we need help with taking things yeah we yes
we can, we can use, use help in taking things down. And now as we go forth from this time together, looking for leadership, looking for the way that we're being led into the future, let us go forth with confidence that this community of faith has had a long tradition and has been active in the community and will be for years to come. Go in peace, go in hope, go in love. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for our Zoom. Ooh, we did it. It's always something, you know. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Henry. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> thanks, Joe. Thanks, Casey, Del, uh, Jan, and Sally, and they're gone, I think. No. Thanks, yeah, Casey, Del, Bonnie, Cheryl. All right. Good night, everybody. Well, ha have a good trip, Casey. I'm having a wonderful trip. I was in the pool in the hot tub oh, yesterday. Oh. We went to an art museum today, and the curator herself, who's a friend of our friends, uh, took us around. Sweet. Sweet. Cool. It's very cool. Thank yeah. you. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Love you.